Good morning, third graders. Um, we're back for another section of our book, Long Popo. Um, so when we last left off, we were talking about the characters. We discovered that the characters in this book were the mother, Shang, Tao, Pao Tse, and the wolf. Well, today we're going to talk about what's the problem in the book. Now, lucky for us, the problem in this book is pretty obvious. What did you think the problem was when you made your choice on the previous slide? Hmm. Well, let's review what just happened when we left off yesterday, and maybe that'll help us figure out what the problem is. All right, so when we last left off, all the kids were in bed with their grandmother, who's not actually the grandmother, it's actually the wolf, and Shang had just said, Popo, Popo, your hand has thorns on it. Popo has brought an awl to make shoes for you, the wolf said. At once, Shang lit the light and the wolf blew it out again. But Shang had seen the wolf's hairy face. And that's where we left off yesterday. So, thinking about what's happening in this book, what do you think the problem is? Well, the problem is something that happens to the main characters that makes it hard for them to you know, do what they want to do or to be alive or to have fun. Something bad, basically, that happens to the main characters. Well, in this story, it's pretty clear what happened to the main characters is there's a wolf in their house. And we don't know for sure, but we can probably infer, based on what we know about wolves and fairy tales, that the wolf wants to eat the kids. So I think the problem in this book is that the wolf wants to eat the kids. I'm gonna write that down on a post-it. The problem is that the wolf to eat the kids. And like I said, we don't know that 100% for sure because it didn't say it in the book, but we can infer it using what we already know about wolves and fairy tales. Like in Little Red Riding Hood, the original one, or the Three Little Pigs, or, well gosh, there's so many fairy tales where the wolf is trying to eat people. So I think that's probably what's happening here. Now let's keep reading a couple extra pages and see what Shang tries to do about the problem. Popo, Popo, Shang said, for she was not only the eldest, she was the most clever. You must be hungry. Have you eaten ginkgo nuts? What is ginkgo? The wolf asked. Ginkgo is soft and tender like the skin of a baby. One taste and you will live forever, Shang said. And the nuts grow on top of the tree just outside the door. The wolf gave a sigh. <sighs> oh dear, Popo is old. Her bones have become brittle. No longer can she climb trees. Good Popo, we can pick some for you, Shang said. The wolf was delighted. the wolf looking so delighted about those ginkgo nuts. Shang jumped out of bed and Tao and Pao Tse came with her to the ginkgo tree. There, Shang told her sisters about the wolf and all three climbed up to the tall tree. The wolf waited and waited. Plump Tao did not come back. Sweet Pao Tse did not come back. Shang did not come back and no one brought any nuts from the ginkgo tree. At last, the wolf shouted, where are you children? Popo, Shang called out, we are on top of the tree eating ginkgo nuts. Good children, the wolf begged, pluck some for me. But Popo, ginkgo is magic only it is when it is plucked directly from the tree. You must come and pluck it from the tree yourself. And there they are up in the top of the tree. So that's actually where we're gonna leave off for today. We haven't quite figured out how Shang and her sisters are gonna solve this problem. They're at the top of the tree, but they can't stay there forever. 
So tomorrow we're going to finish reading the book and see what Shang's solution is to solve their problem of the wolf wanting to eat them. All right, that's it for today. See you later, third graders.